Hey, what's going on, Will Mydell, once again with a daily vlog. Yo, so what's good? What's cracking? What's cracking? Um, it's uh, about two forty-four in the morning. Saturday, I'm still up and um, just got a couple of emails in from uh, Virginia wanting some retouching done for a brochure for May, I think an event in May. So I thought I'd do some retouching. Uh, maybe I'll do a speed art um, video for you guys and so you can see my process of what I do when I get these type of emails from companies um, want some work done. So. With further ado, let me pull up the screen and show you guys what I'm talking about right quick. All right, so as you can see, my new Daredevil uh, background that I just created the other day. Um, all right, so first I get this email with this to-do list with these images that I've shot um, on my last visit to Virginia uh, and my visit to Atlanta. Um, these are the models that they want to be used in the brochure and the number which is the file name or the file number of the image. So um, what I do I just go to all the images that I shot as you can see all these images I mean I shot a lot of images and it's probably like over 200 something well, so yeah, it's over 60 something something gigs, over like 5,000 files. Some of these are probably converted into JPEG, so it's probably like over like two or 3,000 images. So, um, good thing is, all of these images up top, I've, I've already retouched, which you can see in the, uh, let me see, brochure. Yeah, I've already retouched these images already, which is, let me see, 40. 4890 which is this one here I've already retouched that all these images I've shot also uh, 4663 which is right here uh, 4806 which is this dude 4906 which is this chick 5120 this chick 5218 we got 5218 down here and I have two images I haven't worked on yet we got 6946 and they want this image cropped at the shoulder um, and this girl from Atlanta which is 5442 I think tonight I'm gonna do I'm gonna just go down the list and work on 6946 first and then maybe tomorrow I'll do the girl from Atlanta that I shot uh, when I was in Atlanta so let me go to um, what folder is this in? 6946. That would be models shot, I guess. You can see some of these mock ups I created for them too for the brochure for next year. As uh, far as models that you know they might want for the front or the back. Um, let's see, 6946. Let me just do a search. And. Okay, so it's this model here. All right, so let me bring this into um, Photoshop right quick and make some notes and see what I need to do um, in this image. Okay, so uh, yeah, most likely what I'm gonna be doing um, is probably working on some straight, uh, some of these strands. Uh, I'll probably won't remove these. I kind of like the natural look, but some of this over here, I need to work on that. Fix these over here, fix that. Um, let me break it into Photoshop right quick and show you how to make notate notations. And if you want to start retouching this, is something good you want to uh, work on doing. It's uh, just create a, a blank layer. And uh, let me see. And get a brush. And let's 
see, so I might need to just make some notations. So I need to work on this. That, that. This right here. That way I know uh, how to remove that question mark. I don't know, I might keep that. Work on this area right here. Needs uh, to be touched up. This here. And change the color up. Alright, um, makeup artist did an alright job. Uh, it's not that much I have to work on as far as on skin. It's just you know, little blemishes. It's not that bad. Um, fix that. Fix that. Put on this section here. And we gotta do something about this neck. <laughs> um, a lot going on here and I'm pretty sure they're gonna email me and be like well can you do something with this you know this whole area and the thing is with retouching you don't want to you know Photoshop is so much that when you're looking at it you're like okay I know that's her but I know that's not her that's not I mean because people that know her know how she looks in person and you don't want to slim her down to the point that it looks so fake but you, you want it to be at least you know you know like some ladies are telling me you know Knock, 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 four, knock 10, 20 pounds off of me. Make me look like Beyonce. I had this lady tell me that uh, when I shot her, shot her stuff. You see her shoulders poking out like she been hitting the gym, getting bulked. And maybe this little area here. And this area here. So that's gonna be the challenge really. It's like finding a way to slim down this arm. And uh, and making his back not look so strong as it is. You know? It's like, okay, you got a nice feminine look up here, then it's like, okay, I lift weights. But even though we're, we're gonna be cropping at the shoulder, so we're probably gonna be cropping out right there, maybe. It did say crop at the shoulder, right? Crop at the shoulder. All right, so we don't have to worry about all this down here. So let's probably do about right here. And bring this in. This rule of thirds to kind of even it out. All right, so now we got a different playing field. And bring this in a little bit. All right. Yeah, so that, that shouldn't be that bad, you know, to push that in the shoulder and maybe squeeze the neck in a little bit, you know. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be working on. So um, I'm gonna jump straight into this. And I'll come back later in the next uh, clip and I guess we can break down what we worked on. All right, so let me get started.
see we have this image here of this model finished image all right let's take a look at some of the before and afters we have the before after before after before after so you can see what I did I um I wonder if I can do it side by side see something here um, let's go into the before right quick you can see where I cleaned up at the hair not too much but like this little area right here remove this and you can see uh, the texture of the skin looks cleaner you can see where the acne was removed And this is what you're looking for when you're looking for somebody that's going to retouch photos and shoot because you have a lot of guys out there that will just go in there and blur everything and just put some filter on it and they're like done. And it looks like, I mean you don't even see the skin texture anymore, just everything's blurry. Before, after, alright. Clean up around the ear, before, after, see this area here. So I didn't push in her face too much, just a little bit, you know, where, where the neck area is, because I didn't want it to get all warped. So I just took maybe like five pounds off of her. Same thing with the bag and the tattoo. You know, normally I would have left the tattoo on, but seeing it as for a company, and they might be using this for advertisement, you know, I just went ahead and removed the tattoo. So, you know, and this little hair, all these little, you can tell where the hairstylist may have got the comb or some shears and just went through the hair uh, as we were shooting. See the skin texture, clean. That's some things you wanna um, keep in mind also when uh, working on set with a photographer is to make sure you brush this stuff off with a, a, a brush, like this little hair. And it helps the guy out that's gonna be retouching it later so he's not sitting there for hours, you know, cleaning all that stuff up because that stuff is tedious work, cleaning all that stuff up, you know. You know, it takes a second to brush off of the model. You know. Only people that have been shooting for a while and are accustomed to that type of uh, 
high-end editorial uh, are used to that. And you don't have to ask them, they'll automatically do it. They'll, they'll tell the photographer, hold up, I see something. And then they'll go and remove it. You know, access hair up here. Uh, I'm gonna knock that out. So yeah, I think that's the image I'm gonna use for this model that they wanted, which is model 6946 that we cropped at the top. And that'll be our final image. Let me see if I could do a before and after and pull them up. Let me see something. Um, I'm gonna export this out. That's before. Oh man, it's like what? It's six twenty in the morning. I gotta go lay down and take me a nap. I told Mr. Cabell I will come see him today for his second show, which will be from twelve to six, I think. And stop by and uh I still gotta do an interview with him for our hair issue. Uh, excuse me, which I was working on before this. I took a break. Um, Cause when it comes to work that I'm getting paid for, I don't like to hold my clients up. So I go ahead and knock that stuff out first. And uh, then I go back to my other work. It's sometimes you gotta take a break from this, especially retouching because you start feeling it in your wrist. I mean, it's different. I was using a mouse, but I'm using a tablet. So I'm always in, uh, you know, a drawing position, you know, and I'm always back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, you just gotta give your wrist a break, you know, and your eyes, you know, it's, you know, you have people that have like physical work and they get tired and restless from physical work, physical labor. And then there's this type of labor where you can get the exact same, uh, exhaustion you know from just looking at the computer screen because it's, it's really working this up here it's really working in my you can see all these bottles i worked on all these bottles i retouched that's just that's not even half of them let me see um tim shoe let's see i gotta do the video from uh let's see something here Bottles. Hey, look at all these bottles I retouched. You got the pump. Retouch this pump. Small and large. And then I, uh, I masked out each one. Got these capes and aprons. Retouch shot. Shot on the white background. And the masked out shot. You know, I like to give your client options so they can have their uh, the image they're gonna put on the website and then a cropped out shot that they might wanna put on a flyer or something or, you know, whatever it may be, so. Got your uh, coconut milk, shampoo, styling foam, leave-in conditioner and glazed edges and you got your before and you got your after. Like you even see this bottle right here. You see how I retouched that? This is the original bottle, the conditioner. And this right here, you see how this is leaning to the right? Like, look how I fixed that. You know, I straightened that up. Now it's up straight. And this one, I raised the, I raised the bottle to match the height of the other bottles. So that stuff takes time, you know? But then I retouched each one single because I shot each one of these singly, individually, so they could put it on the website. And now that I'm looking at this, I have to go back because these don't have um, the JPEGs, the ones I need to go on the website. So I'm glad I'm looking at this. I need to go back and do that. Mental note, I need to go back and do that. What about this one? So yep, a lot of work. Okay, retouch these. Then we got to cut out. Boom, mask. 
lot of bottles. This is one of the ads I created from a magazine, coconut milk. I got it popping up out of a milk. I mean, popping up out of a coconut. Yeah, so, um, vibrant colors. Retouch, all these bottles. That's why if you're a photographer and you retouch, and you know your worth, don't go, don't go down on price, you know, because people will be like, oh, well, you charge too much. You're like, you don't know the half of the work that people have to do. I mean, and that's why I post these videos online to show people, you know, the work that goes into like, not only shooting and lighting a product or a model, but the post-production. Post-production meaning the work you do after the photo shoot in the computer to make sure it looks stellar, you know, that it looks high end, you know, that it's on the same level when it comes to competition with, uh, I gotta go back and fix this too, this is too dark at the bottom, the shadow is. When it comes to um, competing with your competition, you know, I was telling a young lady at the event at Timothy's show uh, the other night when it comes to, she doing makeup, and I, I was talking to her about competition and setting her work apart from everyone else. And I was telling her, look, if you want your work to set, be set apart from everyone else, you need to take it up a notch. If you know every makeup artist in Savannah is doing X, Y, Z, and you can see everybody's on the same level, and they're like, oh, it's just basic, you need to go up another level. You know, uh, whether it's getting a website, or doing uh, tutorials, or doing more editorials. Because most makeup artists that post stuff online is just gonna be random makeup. Some some makeup artists tell my, oh, I just beat this person face, you know, or they're slayed to the gods, you know, and it's just some, you know, some chick in front of a, a ring light, you know, showing off the makeup she just did, whether it's for her going out, uh, going to work, going to a wedding, going to an event. Okay, it's like every makeup artist does it. What's gonna make your page and your brand stick out from everyone else? You know, and I tell people that all the time. You, know, you can't, you, you either gonna want the small cheese or you gonna want the big cheese. Like my boy Project Pat say, I want the big cheese. If you know everyone's doing basic stuff, why don't you go do some work that is extravagant? Go do some editorial work. You know, uh, some prosthetics, you know, just step outside of the box. And here's another uh, poster I did with this model. I think who did this hair? I think a uh, hairstylist named Tomiko. And uh, this is an advertisement I created. So, yeah, so um, I'm glad I finally got all these bottles uh, retouched and masked out because this took a long time. It took a long time shooting all this too. I think when me and the CEO was at his shop, we were we were at a shop to like two or three in the morning, just going through all these bottles shooting. And um, then I went back to the hotel and had a few hours of sleep and had to come right back to shoot some more models. So um, that's why I don't ever go out. Cause I'm like, if I go out, I ain't gonna get no work done. If I'm out mingling and talking to people and you know people people that do that don't have a lot of <laughs> I'm not gonna say responsibility because everyone has like a certain level of responsibility but everyone doesn't have well I can't say responsibility when it comes to priorities and you know your work life you know my work life is really uh, busy because I'm, I'm not only working for um, a company um, that's paying me to do work for them, but I have my own brand to focus on. And, um, and my own brand, I treat like a baby because it needs to be cared for like continuously all the time. Cause I know, I know that I know the level of competition I have to deal with. So I, I can't slip and I always have to stay on top of things. And that type of lifestyle ain't for everybody. You know, a lot of people are complacent. You know, they're just satisfied with the brand they have. You know, they're just, well, I just make do with this. And they're cool with it. You know, a lot of people are scared, you know, to step out into that zone of, you know, um, hard work, or pushing yourself to this level that, you know, you're exhausted and you're staying up and you're researching and checking out your competition pushing yourself and your own talents, you know, to um, 
go to another level. It's just like martial arts or sports, you know what I mean? You know, those guys get better and better and better when they're pushing themselves. I think about Bruce Lee all the time, you know, one of my favorites. Like, how this dude just train his body to be a machine, you know, it, just from hard work, always working out, always, you know, studying, always practicing. He was kicking everybody butt. And I was like, how? Because this man treated his body not only as a temple, but he, he put the work in. And I do the exact same thing, so. Yeah. Maybe I'm babbling because it's late and I might be sleepy. And my coffee's getting cold. And I'm out of uh, cream and cheese and chives. Crispy wafer crackers. Yep. All right, Tim, I'm going to see you in a few hours, man. I'm going to go lay down. And, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm pretty sure everyone's at Savannah State turning up. Homecoming, I'm good. <laughs> I haven't been at homecoming at Savannah State for that like going on 10 years. I ain't missing nothing. You know, I'm straight, you know, so... Not knocking anybody going. Y'all had to have fun, but uh, you won't be seeing me out there probably ever. Um, unless I, I plan on setting up a booth to sell or something, which I, I probably still won't do anything because I don't feel that's a proper environment to um, sell something, knowing that everyone's going to be on uh, some type of uh, intox, uh, I mean, some, some type of uh, drink or um, herb. If you will, to each his own. I'm gonna talk to you guys later. Subscribe to the channel, like the like like the video. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna be doing live videos soon, not from my phone, but from um, my computer, real soon. And I'm probably gonna do it on Tuesdays, and I'm probably gonna do my live videos on YouTube on Thursdays. So look forward to that. And um, hope you guys engage, drop some comments, ask some questions. And uh, if you have some kids in school that are interested in what I, like graphic design, photography, website design, or whatever, when you see me go live, I mean, if you're not interested, go get your kids involved. You know, I'm all about teaching. I'm, I'm going to be teaching my little uh, cousins um, how to do this stuff because I'm going to be so busy. Certain things especially for my church because um, with my workflow, it's gonna be a lot of times I can't get on the camera at my church. I do a lot of recording at my church and uh, we got a YouTube channel also. But I, I wanna teach the kids how to do it and, and get them going with that. So um, if you got any kids that's interested and they might not be learning this in school, they might wanna go to school for it. I mean, if you see I'm going live and you're on your tablet or your phone and you want them to come on and watch, cool. You know, um, I'll tell you, how, if they don't have Adobe or Photoshop or the software I got, I can provide the links for it, um, the prices for it. I'll probably do a live video on that. So you can uh, get that for them as a present, you know, instead of PlayStation and the Xbox, you know, games sitting there playing that, I mean, they ain't learning from it. You know, um, you can spend our money towards software that can teach them how to do something that can make them some money later on down the road. That's if they're interested, you know. Some might be in sports or something else, or uh, marching band, ROTC, and stuff like that. But uh, if they're interested in this, you know, tell your kids, hey, I got somebody on my Facebook, you, know, you wanna come and watch them learn this, you know. All right, I had fun, I'll talk to y'all later.